everybody, and welcome again to another episode of Heels Up. I am Vlad St. Valentine, and with me, as always, is the only one who matters, Mr. Reggie Lincoln. Hey, brother. What's going on, man? Dude, another day in paradise, brother. Oh, yeah, you know it. Mm. Oh, so we're back again, guys, to review this episode of SmackDown 731 2020. A.K.A. Glitch Mania 2020. Holy dog balls. I don't know if everybody experienced the same problems we experienced, but... We watched uh, it on Hulu, and I thought it was Hulu's problem, and it wasn't Hulu's because nope. we started watching other stuff on Hulu. And But the entire stream tonight, up until the last, what, five, ten minutes? Yeah. Was a glitchy, uh, nightmare horrible, distorted mess. Like, we could, we barely knew what was happening. Like, we could kind of see the finishes and stuff. So, if tonight's episode isn't great, <laughs> blame Fox. Fox News and their fake news and... All the other stuff. Please don't beat me up. Thanks, Obama. All right. Oh, so. we're still, oh wait. We're still doing it? We're still blaming Obama for things? He blamed himself for not being able to dunk a cookie in his milk, so I figured uh, we can use that forever. I, I guess so, yeah. Thanks, Obama. Thanks, Obama. Glitchy fucking SmackDown bullshit. I know. Seriously, right? man. I've seen Max Headroom episodes with less glitchiness. This thing was awful. Like, dude. Uh, you know how computers were? Like, have you ever downloaded the like have you ever downloaded LimeWire before on the computer? <laughs> it was like giving your computer AIDS pretty much. It's like it was like back in the day when you try to like download those minute and a half like porn previews that took like two hours to download. So you start trying to watch it halfway through and you just get like little chunks and stuff, you know? Yeah, and it started glitching. Glitch. That was better than tonight's SmackDown. Dude, oh man. Like, whenever fucking Naomi came out and started glitching out, I thought one of us was going to have an epileptic seizure. Like, I was waiting to run to the room and put my wallet between Caden's teeth if he started, like, foaming at the mouth. Oh, my goodness. Like, oh. Yeah, I was, hated it. I hated it just because of the glitching. And then next up, we glitch forward to the Firefly Funhouse. Mm -hmm. You know, where Bray calls out Braun for the universal title. I don't know what all he said because it was too busy glitching. Well, I did get that he basically said, you know, he was looking for Braun. He couldn't find him. He must still be in the swamp. And he never wanted to hurt Braun, but now the Fiend's out, and the Fiend is after something that Braun has, and that's the title. Exactly. You know, that's what, that's pretty much what it came down to. The Fiend wants the uh, Universal title back. It's going to happen once he finds Braun or whatever it is. How the hell did he lose Braun? I don't know. I can't. I, I mean, I love the story. I, I'm stuck in mystery right now. I'm just saying, he's not Hornswoggle. He's not fucking hard to lose. The man's a giant. Like, how do you lose a giant? Just saying. It's not like it's not like it's not like your your keys or your socks. Like, it's hard to misplace. That's all I'm saying. So, for our first match, we go into AJ Styles versus Grand Metal League for the Intercontinental Title. This was, I felt like. I mean, I the all right. The, the outcome was never really in doubt. We knew that AJ was going to win this, and that yes, of course. wasn't going to walk away with the title. But it was so one sided; it felt like a waste of damn time. Yeah, I really thought Grand Metal League was going to put up more of a fight. Uh, the hell was yeah. the point of that? Hey, why even have him win if you're going to make him look this bad? Well, maybe the Lucha House Party get back into the tag team division, and you know they'll see what they can do from there. They're just going to get served up to Shin and Cesaro for their first, you know, few that they're going to win. So, I mean, that's what's going to happen to them because they're doing, they do nothing but get fed to people because the, the Lucha House Party are not believable as opponents at this point in time. Yeah, they have done so less with the Lucha House Party. Which is unfortunate because they are so good when they're on screen. It's like the only time they were really hot was when they were burying the Revival. <laughs> to be fair, everybody got to bury the Revival, so. Yeah. I'm sorry, FTR now. Sorry, FTR. Whatever. All right, so AJ wins this one. Uh, By submission. Yeah, he works on Grand Metalik's uh, leg during this, and he finally gets the crash cover, uh, the calf crusher in and just cinches the son bitch in really good. Oh, he tapped out real quick. And then afterwards, Lindsay Dorado's checking on him, and AJ comes back in and hits him with a Styles Clash just to make a point, you know, that this is what happens when people challenge him for his belt. Exactly. He That's his title, and he's making it what it is. But... This all came off as more of a nuisance for AJ than actual any sort of real competition. So, eh. Yeah, it's what we expected. 
I well, I thought there was going to be a little more. I thought we were going to get more Graham Natalik offense, but every time he tried to start something, at least according to the glitchy mess I watched, uh, AJ kind of had an answer for it. So yeah, it was like watching a Bailey match. So after that, we glitched backstage to Shorty G, who's actually watching a television like a normal damn person, which is weird in the WWE. And then Corbin comes up to him and like starts getting in his head about, you know, how everything he did was just to motivate him and how he's overlooked and how he should have been the one to face AJ Styles and he could have won. And, you know, and basically he's just buttering him up to convince him to take out Matt Matt Riddle Riddle. and collect that that King's ransom. After that, we cut to Jeff Hardy uh, coming out and... I think he gave a promo about overcoming the odds. Again, don't know. Glitchy don't know. nightmare. Ugh. But Corbin comes out, tells him to shut up, and no one gives a rat's ass. And everyone's sick of listening to him. And as <laughs> as jaded as it sounds, I kind of agree with Corbin on this one. Yeah, I kind of agree with him, too. I love Jeff Hardy, but it's kind of getting old, man. Like, and dry. But as Corbin uh, is speaking to Jeff, He gets interrupted by Drew Gulak, which this leads to a match between Gulak and Corbin. Well, they had a match scheduled, and Gulak comes and hits Corbin from behind while he's jawing off at Jeff, and then when we come back from commercial, they're at it. And this was less one-sided than I thought it would be. I thought this would be, you know, Corbin whipping Drew's ass, but, man, Drew looked really Uh, good in this match. Drew is always, they always show Drew as a strong competitor. He looked really good. This is how Uh, you make someone eat pins consistently, but still look like a badass. Because, like, he had an answer for Corbin almost that whole match. He was working over the arm. He was taking on the bigger guy by trying to attack the limbs. He attacked the leg at one point in time. Again, glitchy mess. This is what I got out of it. But Drew looked great from what I could tell. For sure, for sure. I wish I could have watched it in a clearer resolution that wasn't, you know, spazzing out and trying to kill itself. Riddle comes out for the uh, distraction to Corbin. Mm -hmm. It didn't work because Gulak tried to roll Corbin up. Corbin kicked out. Did the end of days to Gulak. One, two, three, it was over. But he was attacked by Riddle right after the bell. So it, they start going mm-hmm. at it. And Shorty G, or I'm sorry, I hate that name. So I'm going to call him Chad Gable. Chad Gable came out and with the save because he wants that King's Ransom. Is the basketball outfit that he rocks supposed to be ironic? Because he's short. Is that, what the, is that the gag? Hey, there's nothing wrong with short basketball players. I... I, he looks a nightmare. Whoever decided that was a good outfit for him lied. Or, and that what that name, the whole gimmick, just the whole thing. This is all bad. Uh, it's all I bad. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. If you look up wasted, <laughs> wasted potential in the dictionary, you just see Chad Gable and Shelton Benjamin going back to back with each other like a buddy comedy in the 90s. Oh, and then what I hate more is that I hate the heel turn. This was a shit attempt for a heel turn. I'm sorry. I don't care. It was a horrible attempt for a heel turn. Because I don't care turn. about Chad Gable, so I mean, I don't really... I mean, there's something to do with him. Just change the Shorty G shit, too, as long as we're at it. If we're going to do a heel change, let's have him grow his hair back out and do something less stupid than Shorty G. Shorty anything. G. Anything is less stupid than Shorty G. Shorty G. So, after this, it's uh, Miz and Big E are next. This is going to be, you know, they're playing if this is Big E's time to shine. It's his turn to come out. So... Love expect, it. Expecting big, I love the big idea. things from Big E. Uh, he does his little rollout, and I love that the roll to ringside has now become his, his entrance. I I hope it shows up in a 2K game. Yeah, just the, yes. the little yes. log roll down. Like, it's a good thing they have the plexiglass now, because, like, I don't know about you, when you're a little kid, you try to roll downhill, you'd always canter off to one side or the other. I just want to see the day Big E rolls off to the side of the ramp or something. Oh, no, he carries too much weight. He'll just <laughs> but then straight. a nurse is just kind of carrying him all the way yeah. through. So it was a good match, at least for as what we could see. And what I think this was speaking to is something that's actually kind of interesting. And every now and then WWE gets some, has some good minor storytelling that I don't even think they're aware of. So maybe they just do it. They did just do it inadvertently. Yeah. But like, this is showing that big E has been a, tag team or a group competitor for so long he's having to adjust to not having someone watch his back he's not used to having to watch the outside himself because there's been somebody there since a while so this is him it's like that scene from uh princess bride you know where uh uh carrie always is choking out andre the giant's like i think i figured out why you give me so much trouble i'm so used to fighting more than one guy 
He used different techniques for this one, man. <laughs> yeah. So that was my Andre the Giant. The trick is to try like your tongue is bigger than the rest of your mouth. <laughs> I just go to the top before I'm going to eat my own tongue. I can't tell that that's Andre the Giant or Sylvester Stallone. No, Sylvester Stallone's a little more intelligible. You, know? you, just gotta, you have a little palsy in your face, you know? <laughs> the Miz uh, versus Big E. Fairly good match. E looked pretty dominant through most of it. Like, he was even playing around, toying with Miz a little bit, and Miz slaps him, and he got fucking serious and started whipping Miz's ass from, like, pillar to post around ringside for a little while. You Hell know? yeah, he did. So Hell yeah, he did. It was pretty good, but, you know, Morrison tries to hop in a few times, gives E a couple of kicks behind the ref's back, and after one of them, Miz hits the... Skull question finale. He only gets two, man. They're, they're trying to show the E is a heavyweight, man. They're letting oh, yeah, the guy yeah. the finishers a, and stuff. A man of many strengths. A so, man of many... So Charles Robinson kicks... Morrison out after the final time he tried to interfere. Third time he tried to kick him, he gets caught, yeah. Exactly. He said, you out of here. And after that, he was on for uh, for Big E, man. He ends up uh, uh, trying to pin, uh, he tried to pin Miz, didn't he? And then the yeah. Miz kicked out and he went right into that and just lifted him straight up into that stretch muffler. And again, it, it, for the little bit that I got clearly, the Miz was selling it and freaking out. It looked great. You know, I was like, I was like, Miz, that looks great, but if you flail any more, he's going to fall over. <laughs> like, I, actually, that shit actually hurts, man. But he held him up and got, yeah, it looked pretty good for what I could see because it glitched out for most of it. And I assume he won with the stretch muffler because when the glitch came back in, they were raising Big E's hand. So I'm guessing that's how he won. So next we got a promo from Shinsuke and Cesaro, which we couldn't understand because it glitched out. They, but they talk shit to the Lucha House Party for losing. Come back from commercial and Sheamus cuts another promo, which, which he couldn't understand. But I assume he said something shitty to Jeff Hardy. I don't know. It uh, he out. said he was finished with Jeff. Hardy okay. Well, much. whatever it glitched to high heaven. So I couldn't understand it, but on to the next match. Yeah. Which we got Naomi versus Lacey Evans because they're trying to show Naomi deserves better. Put the hashtag up there. Yeah. And if she, if they actually believe that they wouldn't have let her got her ass beat this entire match, then win with a roll up out of nowhere, which I mean, with the glitching thing, she looked awful in this match. This is nothing for Naomi. Oh, the, well, the glitch part, where it froze, it didn't look too awful. Right, Kaden? Yeah. It was a pretty nice shot of the roll-up. Yeah. Nice shot of the roll-up. Yeah. Roll yeah. Y'all yeah, gonna get us canceled. Hey, we're not the ones who made this happen. Listen, you 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 misogynist. All right? I'm on the side of all women. Hashtag believe all women. Especially Amber Heard. Hashtag all boobies matter. Yeah, honestly, I I steal it. Like I've said before, stealing wins does nothing for the victor. It really does. You know, they may walk out and upset the person they beat, but it doesn't make them look strong. It just makes them look lucky that one day. Yeah, but it, I like that. It, like this made Lacey look strong as well. Cause I'm not gonna lie, I think she deserves better as well. Lacey was whipping her ass. Lacey looked great in this. I, I like Lacey Evans. Like, I really do. That's a I do too. champion. She looked really aggressive, but this almost is kind of one of those. It almost has that Zack Ryder feel where there's a, there's a, a natural groundswell for somebody in the WWE. is like, oh, you want this person? Fuck you. I you think know? that what they're trying to do is give Naomi the Daniel Bryan story again. You know what I mean? I don't know, but hopefully she actually looks strong in a match and not just, you know, gets lucky. Gets so lucky, yeah. We'll see how it goes from here. We cut backstage, and there's Otis and Mandy talking about going on a date. After that, we, after the commercial break, we come back, and Mandy, I guess, is prepping for their barbecue date, you know, which... Like you saw that, because it was glitching with up with me. I got I got I got some of it, but while she's there trying to get ready, Sonya Deville comes up from behind her and she's like, "I'm gonna make you as ugly as you are on the outside as you're on the inside," and starts like smearing makeup on her face and whips her ass a little bit, then takes the scissors to her and cuts off chunks of her hair, and then she goes and gets the trimmers to buzz it, but the referees break it up and she takes her little clump of hair. She's like, "I got what I need," because I guess she's gonna go back and make a hair doll because she misses Mandy that much. So. Is this I didn't make that. It fell out of your hair that way, and I want it back. Thank you for clearing that up for me, because it all glitched with me. Oh, yeah, no, she went and got hair for a creepy hair doll because she's weird and obsessive. Yeah, it's gross, right? Okay, thank you for clearing that up. No, I got you. But while they were doing it, the Miz and Morrison, they were coming with some, with some very crafty commentary on that. I got a little bit of it. Their puns were golden for what I got. Like, they shaved the day and stuff. Like, those two are just wonderful. At least for the parts I saw, you know, glitch. 
I wish they would get rid of all the talk shows except for Ms. TV and just let those two do that on a regular basis and just be talk show back and forth banter because I'm getting yeah. more out of them with their talking than with their wrestling right now. Well, you know, the VIP lounge isn't too bad. <laughs> Again, but that's raw. Just get Miz and Morrison to show on WWE Network. But then no one would see it. All right, so next we go into our main event. The WWE SmackDown mm-hmm. Women's title between I've Nikki come undone. Mm-hmm. I'm coming undone. You're coming undone? Coming undone. I'm like a Weezer sweater. Just come undone. All right, so main event time. We get uh, Nikki Cross versus Bailey for the championship again. We all know how this is going to go, but we got to go through the motions anyway. At least the only saving grace from this match was that it was not as one-sided as Bailey's matches usually are. Nikki actually did look somewhat strong in this. Yeah, she did. She really did. She looked strong and more determined than ever. But she would still ultimately lose this thing to the I what we call it the rose plant. She should well, it's like she she WW2K this and she saved up a bunch of finishers and hit all of her finishers in a row, like all of her roll-ups, like three or four roll-ups in a row. Because we know that's Nikki Cross's finishing move now. Yeah, that is. But she tried three of those in a row, didn't work out, and Bailey just out of desperation hit that, whatever the hell it's called, Rose Plan or whatever. Whatever it's called. Yeah. I, I don't remember. One, two, three, good night, so long, farewell. And honestly, this night up until this point had been a total waste of damn time. It really has. But you know what? And then that's- it all became worth it. Yeah, at the end, you know, Nikki, she's frustrated over the loss. Alexa tries to help her. She don't, she don't want Alexa's help right now. She just want to be left alone. She's pissed. She pushes Alexa down and runs off. And then the best moment of the night happens. There's no more glitching. Oh, and no more glitching on this, too. Which is weird, because this is when it should have glitched. Yeah. It made sense to glitch on this, but I still liked it anyway. I give up. That's how I felt all night long. All of a sudden, we hear, like, as Alexa is sitting there, we hear the fiend comes out. The 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 sound drops, which, you know, you know, shit's going down when that happens. And that, then that, that screeching power sound. down noise. The fiend appears behind Alexa, who is huddling in the rain, looking absolutely terrified. And I marked out like a punk. I'm I, not going to lie. Oh, oh, I, I was, I was fangirling it the whole time, man. I was like Beatles on Ed Sullivan. I was like, I even threw my panties at the screen. I don't know where I got the panties from. I don't know what I was throwing them at exactly, but I was that excited. I tossed my panties on the screen. Unfortunately, they stuck. We had to get a new screen. So yeah. there is that. The Fiend, he was standing right there with Alexa as he showed her the glove. The hurt glove. The hurt hand. Yeah, the hurt glove. Shows her the hurt hand and brings it all He used a strong hand. But he takes his time. They build it up ominous. They do a tight shot on Alexa, and she sees the hurt hand. She just starts shaking her head. She's terrified. And now, Caden theorizes that with that hand, he was... Uh, you, you say your own fucking theory. He was, he was summoning the spirit of Sister Abigail, and as Alexa realizes what it is, she starts shaking her head, no, 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 before he starts bringing it in and just shoves it down her mouth. Uh See, I interpret it a little more simply, and that's just because I'm a simple man of just, you know, she was just reacting to the hurt hand or the fact that it was bringing down the mandible claw. It was slowly inching on yeah. it. But with all things Bray Wyatt, it certainly is open to interpretation. So, but ultimately he hits the, uh, he puts the mandible claw on Alexa and that's what would go off. Uh, and that, that's where it ended. So obviously he's trying to do things to hurt Braun, or maybe he's going to take her back to the lair and, you know, use her as a vessel for the spirit of, Sister Abigail, which honestly, man, I would be totally happy if like Alexa basically gets abducted, brainwashed and becomes like the Sister Abigail for a good while, like just at least a couple months. You know what I mean? And maybe the storyline is Braun and Nikki having to try and team up and get her back. We do kind of a little mixed tag with the, with the two of them for a little while. I don't know. It could be fun. Yeah, yeah, definitely fun. I'm looking forward to this one. Me too. Me too. This is, again, Bray is consistently one of the most interesting things on television. That's for sure. So give me more Big E, give me more Bray, and give me less Naomi looking like a chump. I'm okay with her and Lacey getting on television because I like seeing them too. I just want to be, you know, maybe tag team with other people or just something something to vary up the the rivalry a little bit without making Naomi look like a chump. Or move one of them to Raw. 
something. I don't mind their rivalry. I just it needs to progress without Naomi looking like a bitch every week. So, guys, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we will see you. Uh, I don't know. We'll see you the next time we get loaded enough to make a video.